John, Michael Gove, the current Education Secretary, has suggested that we need to return to a, a system of O-levels. Um, why do you think he's proposing this right now? Gosh, I'm not sure what's inside his mind. All I can tell you is a little bit that I know about the whole situation in this, because being slightly older than Michael Gove and being around for quite a long time, my lifespan sort of goes over a number of these changes. My uncle, who was only nine years older than myself, did a thing called the Higher School Certificate. And there were two forms of the certificate, the higher and the lower. And if you are bound for university, you aim for the higher. Now, the interesting thing about it was you took in a number of subjects, but you had to take all the subjects at the same time. If you failed one, you had to do everything all over again. And the same went for the lower school certificate. It was all or nothing. And then by the early 1960s, that was deemed as not being a good idea. And so O-level, ordinary level, was brought in, and then advanced level was brought in, advanced level being for the last two years of high school. And that was on a, a more liberal plateau. You could take any number of subjects, and you could take them again if you wanted them. Okay, that's part of the background. But of course, O-level and A-level were only for the grammar school children. They were defined as being exams which could tease out the difference between people in the top 25% of the ability range. In 1965, when the 1944 Education Act really came to fruition, people saying, well, the youngsters going through the second bond schools, why don't they do something? And so a new exam called the Certificate of Secondary Education was introduced in 1965 for the bottom 75% of the population, or more correctly, I suppose, for about from the 25th percentile through to about the 80th, on the basis that the last 20% probably wouldn't take any exams. And I became a headmaster in that situation. And it was sheer hell, because the difference between the academic expectations of O-level and the more, if you like, humanitarian expectations of CSE were enormous. CSE came out of the second modern school tradition, which was much more about how do you give children the ability to understand life, take a responsible position, be ready to work, and get on with it. The O-levels, the old grammar schools, was a sort of detachment about this. This is only one step towards going to university. So you can romp through that. So I started my teaching career at Manchester Grammar School, where in fact the High Master at the time said, O-level is so easy, you won't ever take more than seven subjects at the most, because that's a waste of time. What you've got to do is to concentrate your energy and go for A-level. So you come to Jim Callaghan that we were talking about beforehand, going back into 1976-77. He said, this is ridiculous, we need a common curriculum for everybody. And then there was the War of the Roses, in a sense. People said, how on earth do you make this happen? Is it going to be more like the academic model of O-level, A-level? Or is it going to be more about the, almost the more environmentally friendly CSE, which was actually about how do you fit your school learning into life outside? And eventually, in 1987, 19, yes, 1987, government decided to roll O-level and CSE into a single exam, which could then be used for 100% of the ability range. And it was loaded. Those people who took the, who got higher grades in GCSE were seen as being equivalent to the grammar school. Those who got lower grades were seen as being rather inferior. And we've been struggling with that now for more than 20 years. And the reality is that you can't get a single examination system that applies to absolutely everybody and sorts, what they say, not only sorts people out, but actually does the person who's doing the, the taking the exam some good in finding it. And the English attitude towards examinations has been really this. This is to test what you know, and some of you will be winners and some will be losers. Now, the English, more than any other country, spent an enormous amount of money on examinations. Three or four years ago, the figure was that the cost of examinations was greater than the cost of all the school textbooks, all the scientific equipment needed, and all the materials needed in a school. So the actual examination was 
out of all proportion to everything else. And that is still in our mindset. Now, going back a time, the English never really understood that difference. They never really understood what comprehensive schools were. And Harold Wilson, when he went into the general election in 1971, made the crass, stupid comment. He said of the new comprehensive schools, comprehensive schools will be grammar schools for everybody. And so at that stage, people thought, OK, if I stick it out at a comprehensive school, I'll get qualifications. That means I'm as good as the master. You know, I'm as good as a lawyer, I'm as good as a doctor, even though I've only taken, dare I say it, plumbing or plastering. And so the English have just got into this trap that it's much more about measuring what you know rather than measuring what you can do. And it's the what you can do bit that is so very important. Having said that, there has been a desperate downgrading of the quality of results. I think over the past 27, 28 years, A-level results have been seen to be getting better in every year over a 28-year period. Why is that? Two reasons. First of all, the examination boards are now passing people to higher grade or with a higher grade than they ever were beforehand. And secondly, a well-briefed teacher, listening to what the examiners are saying, knows almost exactly how to tell his pupils what they need to know to pass the exam. Now, as somebody who went into, into O level and A level a long, long time ago, no one had a clue exactly what we're going to be asked. So we were educated, able to do the whole lot. Now, I have a lot of sympathy with Michael Gove and the general public when they say this, this dumbing down has got to stop. Of course it's got to stop. But there is a very vexed issue. If you're going to have two systems, the fault line between the two is terrible. As a headmaster of years gone by, I had to live with teachers who were having to make decisions from day to day and saying to a certain child, I'm sorry, you're not good enough to do O-level, you're going to do CSE. And then the enormous pressures from parents who would actually say, and probably quite rightly, if you enter my child for CSE rather than O-level, my child is lost. Now the resolution of that is not to bring back O-levels as they used to be, but is to bring back a whole new appraisal of the difference between qualifications and competencies. And that can seem a long word which might sound an academic trying to befog the issue. But the real issue is actually what is it you really have to know definitively as if it's, you know, acts of God and how you can actually use that information. We need to be much more concerned about developing examination systems that help us to assess what people's competences are.